Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have David Little, business expert at Fast Track VC. David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm excited to have you at the show. I think you guys kind of have a different kind of take on the VC kind of uh, market. But maybe before we get into that, maybe let's get to know you a little bit and cover kind of your background and where you grew up. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. So where where did you kind of, where were you born originally from? Okay. I was born in London, England. Sure. Okay. I could tell kind of by the accent I, I was assuming. So tell me about that. What are, you grew up right in England. At what point did you kind of move to America? Um, okay. Um, so um, I was born in London, England, um, then went to university. Okay. In, in, in England? Yeah. Okay. What did you take in university? Um, I did business management and media. Okay. So what kind of wanted or... What made you decide to go into that? Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So okay. um, I actually started out um, going to uni to do computer science. Really? Okay. I, I actually found it a little bit too easy and it didn't really, it didn't challenge me. So it didn't inspire me. So um, partway through, I changed course, decided really? I wanted to get a new skill that I didn't have already. So I decided to um, switch over to business and then... To my parents' delight, finally managed to get out of university. <laughs> <laughs> so how many years in university did you spend um, I spent four years um, at uni as a student, technically, and then okay. an extra year working for the uh, student union. Oh, okay. And then... Well, that's not too long, though. No, it's two years longer than they'd have liked me to be there, but... Sure. Okay. Well, so then what did you do after you graduated university? Okay, so um, I graduated uni to a terrible job market in England. Okay, what year was this roughly? Uh, this would have been back in 2010. Okay, okay. Um, so the job market was pretty poor. So first first I went on the dole. Okay. And then um, I started doing web development. Okay. Um, so started out just freelance. Oh, okay. Discovered I really liked skiing. Okay, and interesting. So, um, I decided to sa save up and then go on to Whistle Canada. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I live in Edmonton, so I'm like a province over. But yeah, oh nice. So no, that's awesome. So, what made you decide to go to Canada? Um, this is gonna sound really bad, but I wanted to do a ski season somewhere where they spoke English. Okay, no, that's fair. I, um, I know lots of people that go to certain parts of the States or even down to Australia to do the same thing. So no, that makes sense. So yeah, I decided I wanted to do a ski season. We're not really known for mountains in um, England. So sure. that, that limited my options. So I thought Canada is pretty easy to get a visa. So sure. So how long did you stay in Canada then? The original plan, six months. Okay. Uh, actual? Actual <laughs> plan. It's been about four years now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. So, what made you kind of stay? Um, it was mainly the outdoor way of life. Really love the mountains, really love skiing. And then um, a couple of years back, I was presented with a great job opportunity with our founder. Okay. Uh, decided to um, take it on and then haven't left since. So how did you meet the founder? Um, he was just hiring and okay. um, saw the job advert, thought, I can do that. Sure. And so you just applied online and kind of then got Abs the interview and met? Absolutely. Okay. So this is Fast Track VC, correct? Uh, so this was back when it was Be Anywhere Canada. So um, Okay. So let's cover that. Like what exactly was that? Okay. Uh, so we were a remote control software company. So okay. um, uh, when I got involved, we were um, we sold to um, mainly IT technicians, large okay. companies, managed service providers that needed to give remote support to their clients. So sure. um, I got involved there from a sales point of view, and um, it just it all built up from there. Okay, interesting. So at what point did you guys decide to kind of start Fast Track VC? 
Um, when we sold Be Anywhere. Okay. Um, so, um, so who did you sell that to? Well, you don't have to tell me, but like who? You... Um, ab- absolutely. We okay. um, sold to a company called Solar Winds based okay. in Austin, Texas. Okay. So walk me through that process. Like how long did it take? The, obviously they acquired you for a bunch of money. You don't have to disclose the amount if you don't want to, but like, I'm just kind of curious to know what was it like getting acquired by a company, especially in another country? Um, it was a fantastic experience. Okay. Like it was, um, it probably took about, I want to say about seven or eight months from okay. when they first made interest to when it actually happened. It was a bit of a roller coaster. Is it going to go through? Sure. Is it not? And then, um, I go into work one day and, oh, uh, we've sold the company today. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Did you have to work for that company after you guys got acquired? Um, no. So um, no. I stuck with our founder. And okay. so uh, pretty much a couple of days after being acquired, Ruben said, Dave, I've got a new job for you. Uh, okay. Fast Track VC. Okay. So what is Fast Track VC? Um, okay. So we're a venture capital company with a slight twist. Okay. So, um, our founder, Ruben, he's been very successful throughout the years in building companies up from scratch and then selling them. So um, Be Anywhere was actually the second company he sold last year. He also had an RFID company called Creative Systems, which was okay. very successfully sold to Tygo International. So he he basically wanted to give back a little bit into the community because he's uh, spent a lot of time building up companies from scratch and then getting them ready for exit, sure. um, as well as helping companies go public as well. So he wanted to give give a little bit back to the entrepreneur community. Um, he had a lot of money to um, from the sale from Be Anywhere, which he wanted to uh, really just put back back in, really. And so we kind of saw a unique opportunity that, You've got a lot of competitions to win twenty thousand dollars. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got venture capitalists, which will give you money towards or equity. But there wasn't really something that combined both. Okay. So he wanted to kind of c- combine both, so to create an open platform that anyone with a great idea could apply apply through. We'll take a look as long as you got an MVP. Okay. We'll take a look at that MVP and we'll invite the best companies to pitch and then the winners will get not only an investment of up to 750,000 US dollars but also a $50,000 cash prize. Oh wow. Okay, so how do you kind of decide what companies you'll go with and and how do I submit my company, I guess? Okay. Is a better. Uh question. so first of all, all you have to do is go to our website. Okay. Uh when you go to our website, you've got a very simple questionnaire you f- fill out when you're ready all we need is proof of the mvp so it can be a video a okay. software demo preferably a video because it's a little bit easier for us to watch <laughs> sure i'm sure you get lots of uh people uh applying and and whatnot so i'm kind of curious to know exactly what would you say to somebody that says like why exactly are you guys kind of different i know you kind of quickly covered it but kind of just maybe elaborate on that a little bit more okay absolutely so um the main things I would say, we've got obviously the competition-based funding, mm-hmm. which is a little bit different, but the other is what we're actually going to put into the company. So okay. um, we've got a very experienced CFO, which will be a resource which will be available to the company. Okay. Um, we've got a very experienced CEO that will be a mentor and really help them grow. And then we've got myself and my other colleague who are experts in sales. So Okay. We can, we're not looking to necessarily be a ex- direct accelerator for them, but we'll, we're, we've got a lot of great resources uh, to dispose of uh, that we can really help them um, reach the next level. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So I get selected, then kind of what happens to my company? Okay, so um, if we select you, you'll um, do a pitch to us. Okay. Um, either in our office in Whistler. Okay. Or we'll um, fly out to you. Okay. And you handle anybody kind of in North America or globally? Or, globally. Or, or, okay. Awesome. So um, we're we're working uh, with um, incubators. Okay. We're working with universities. 
Um, in, we've got universities involved in London, in Sweden. Oh, wow. So well all over. You, as well as the US, uh, even in Australia as well. So we're really doing a big global search for the best. Okay. Um, so when we choose you to pitch, um, it's up, then it's all in your hands. So you need to um, prepare yourself to pitch as you would pitch to any other investor. Sure. Um, I will help um, all of the companies selected uh, with their pitch as well, give them some feedback and advice okay. so that they're ready. Okay. It's, it's my job to get them the investment, I would say. Okay, interesting. So you're basically the internal guy helping an external company get money from you guys. Yes. That's awesome. That's interesting. So what do you kind of look for and what do you see kind of that people do that you say, like, don't do that? And then what are things that you should say, yes, you need to add this to your pitch for sure? Uh, so I would say the first thing is probably take slides out. Okay. Um, so how many, do you have a rough g estimate of how many slides should be in there? Or does it really depend on the company? Um, I think uh, I'm actually stealing this from Guy Kawasaki. That's fine, man. Uh, but 10. 10 is the magic number. 10. Interesting. That's, that's low. Well, traditionally that's low, which, but it makes a lot of sense, right? People are busy. You want to get through pitches. Okay. So what should be in that, pit, in that 10 slide pitch? Okay, so um, it's got to have a little bit about the company. Okay. It's got to show us the problem. Okay. And also, more importantly, why does the problem need to get solved? Okay, interesting. Um, so um, that, that's kind of important. We don't want you to tell us it's a $10 trillion market and I only need 1%. Because, sure. Um, interesting. You probably hear that a lot. Yeah. Absolutely, because the way, the way I look at it, like say take su the submarine industry, it's sure. a ten trillion dollar market. Sure. But if there's one thing they don't need, it's sunroofs. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> you could get one like so one percent of that is a problem that doesn't need to be solved. So interesting. I I got you. That's that's interesting. So, do you only invest in a certain type of industry or is it kind of general or, or what industries do you guys kind of invest in so um the only thing it's easier if i tell you what we won't invest in sure that works uh so we won't invest in dating apps and we okay. won't invest in freemium games like okay and just you have experience in that and they don't work or you just decided no that's not for us we we decided no that's not for us okay like, fair enough you know, typically they need a huge amount of funding. Most of them go bust and they don't really excite us. So we're sure. And pretty much now you mainly get copycat technology. So uh, we're open to anything technology based as sure. long as it's innovative um, and it's a new idea, basically. OK, no, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to know you guys promote this kind of idea to start up in six months. What does that exactly mean? Obviously, I get that you're, the idea is to launch something in six months, but what, what is kind of the process of that to get me through a launch in six months? Because that's pretty quick. Um, okay, so um, three months of that would just be the competition time. Okay. So um, you've basically got three months to have your MVP finished. Okay. Um, so it's it's open to companies that are already working on their MVP okay. um, as well. Uh, so you've got three months to um, three months to uh, finish the MVP. At the end of the three months, we'll look at all of the successful MVPs that are finished, and then we'll judge. Probably the first couple of weeks, we'll be deciding who we want to pitch from. Then we'll be pitching. Uh, then there'll be a couple of months of due diligence, and then after that, funds will be transferred. Okay. So. Do I need to come to Whistler for that period of time or I can work wherever I'm located? So you can work wherever you're located. So okay. in terms of the pitch, the pitch will most likely be in person, but either we'll fly out to you or we'll fly you out to us. Okay, interesting. So how does that, how long do I have to pitch? Um, I would say your pitch will probably should 
aim to be no longer than 20 minutes. Okay. Because we're going to ask a lot of questions. Okay. So I'll blow through my 10 slide deck in 20 minutes, or am I expected to do that kind of in 10 and then 10 minutes of questions? Or no, it really no, no, depends. no. 20 minutes to do your 10 minute. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And then um, we're going to ask you um, lots of questions. Okay. And so the important thing is to know, know your product, know your problem, and try and figure out who your early adopters are going to be. So okay, um, you don't necessarily need to know who your final market's going to be because it's, it's an MVP. So you're still testing the waters and finding out who really is going to buy the product. Sure, that's fair. So I'm curious then, having you kind of inside helping them kind of prepare like what's what's the kind of success rate that you guys are hoping to get like is it one in three one in ten like how many companies would you kind of traditionally invest in or does it really depend on how well the pitch goes and kind of how well it's, there's not like a magic number um we we don't have a magic number okay. uh, we obviously want to be successful in a hundred percent Sure, um, but re realistically, um, it's 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 tough to say. Uh, we're going to do everything we can, though, to make sure every company is successful. Okay, um, I would say our very first competition, we want to invest in at least three companies. Okay, we've got um, we've got scope for more than that, but okay. um, if we don't get three companies i'll probably be looking for a new job <laughs> myself <laughs> at least you're honest absolutely no but i think i think that's good to know right because you're you're offering a quite a bit of money and you're you're offering quite a bit of guidance and kind of team members i would say you know especially having a financial officer and a sales team and and kind of business development and stuff like that 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 is like yes you're giving money but in some cases, just having that team is almost more valuable than the money. Absolutely. Because you don't, people don't know about this stuff, right? And it's kind of, you're getting advice from people that have been there. So you're almost getting mentors as well. Ab absolutely. Because I mean, with a lot of startups as well, they might have created a great product, but they need to be able to sell it. Sure. And so, you know, having someone that can help you sell is very important. Sure. Uh, sales and marketing is where a lot of startups cheap out of yes. and they they don't realize that that's almost as important as developing the product. Oh, in my opinion, it's 80% of the game. It doesn't yeah. matter how beautiful or how awesome or how feature rich your product is. If you can't get it out to the people that need it through sales and marketing, you will not do well. Absolutely. Right. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious, you have a sales and kind of business development background. What advice do you kind of give to startups or, or yeah, like what advice do you give to startups? Um, okay. So I would say the first thing is almost forget about your features because the, okay. Because the prospect out there doesn't actually care. Okay. So what do they care about? They care about their own problem and how you're going to solve it. Sure. So um, when you're trying to sell, I would say the most important thing is to step back and listen. Okay. Once once you step back and listen to what the problem is, then you've got to figure out, can my product s solve that? Okay. So you basically go to them and say, based on our conversation or what I understand about your company, you have this problem and here's my product that solves that problem. And I'll give you kind of a demo or how do you kind of approach you know a prospect with that okay so i would say first of all you need to try and find prospects that could be having that problem okay and um, how do you go about doing that um so you've got a few options so um you've got uh the option of going to trade shows trade shows are great if you choose the right ones and okay. obviously you can speak to people in person you've got cold calling it's not the nicest thing but it's still a very Sure. Effect, a very effective way to sell. And the important thing is find out who the decision maker is. Okay. Once you've found who your decision maker is, uh, that's the guy you want. So obviously 
it's not always that straightforward. You can't necessarily pick up the phone and talk to the CTO or the CEO. You have to go through gatekeepers. Sure. What a lot of mistakes people make is they try and sell to the gatekeeper. Okay. And so it's not great to sell to the gatekeeper because they can't make the decision. So sure. even if they say, even if you waste, spend all of your time convincing them that you've got the right product, they can't give you an answer. So the best, the best thing to do is ask them for their help. Okay. So you ask them for their help, you can find out what kind of problems they're having. So you can get a rough idea from that once you, and then once you found out who the decision maker is, that's when you really need to listen. So you need to bring in a hook, like, um, you know, I hear you might be struggling with this. I've got, I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. I might be able to help you. How does that sound? So once you've then got the hook, you listen to, and then you find out what's his buying decisions. Can he afford the product you have? And that that's when you can then start to actually give your pitch. Okay, interesting. And until then, you're a, a listener. Then you've also got other options, such as you could, do you sell direct to the consumer, direct to the business, or do you go through the channel? And so there's a lot to think about when it comes to what the best sales strategy is. Sure. Sometimes at Be Anywhere, it was all three. Okay, interesting. So how do you, okay, so you're talking to the secretary, for example. How do you get to her boss, I guess? Do you, do you reach out through him online? Does eventually she pass you along, kind of a bit of both? Or like, how do you connect with the guy that you need to actually, that makes the decision? Me personally, I call up the secretary. Okay. And I say, I'm really hoping you could help me today. Um, who would the best person to speak to and how would be a really convenient time for them? Okay, interesting. So you basically try to get her to help you and coordinate when is the most likely time they'll get back to you? Uh, no, 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 I'm not asking them to get back to me. I'm like, what time can I call? Oh, I'm, I'm not okay, saying it okay. as bluntly as that. Okay, interesting. And I then it also, one little trick with sales I found really helps is also suggest times. Okay, so, so when, like, when, you, when she'll say, oh, he's pretty busy today, and go, oh, how about Tuesday, maybe three o'clock? And then okay. when you suggest that time, she'll then generally say, oh, no, that doesn't work. How about four o'clock? And then you say, yeah, great. Whereas if you, I found if you just say what time would be best, she'll give you, I don't know, he'll call you if he's interested. So, okay. You, Okay, so you basically need to not get her to tell you, but you basically are saying, like, you kind of give them options, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, interesting. Whilst at the same time being authoritative, because you've got to almost suggest that my time is as valuable as yours. Interesting. I've never heard that, but that makes a lot of sense, that you almost like, I'm busy, my, people want my product, so like I'm surprised that we're even having this conversation because yeah. you need my product too. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Whilst at the same time, not trying to come across as too arrogant either. Sure. It's, it's a very fine balance. Sure. No, that's, that's really interesting. So you get the call with the guy that can make the decision. What, how do you kind of open that conversation? Or, or is it chances are she's already kind of filled him in a little bit? Um, I would generally presume she hasn't. Okay, okay. If I've done my job well, she won't have because, as I said, I don't want to sell to her. Sure, okay, interesting. Uh, or him. Um. Okay, so what do you kind of, how do you open with him? Um, so the first thing is I, I, I just ask him questions and I try and find out... Uh, I'll obviously do a bit of research on the person. Sure. You know, just, just a couple of minutes to find out, you know, is he qualified? And then I'm just going to ask him questions to qualify him. And also, when you qualify someone, they'll generally like you a lot more anyway because you, it's who is this guy? He really cares about me. Okay, interesting. And so you're, you're, you're just asking questions to find out. So what kind But like, how do you open those questions? Do you say... Like, I have this problem that I'm trying to solve and I want your opinion on it? Or, like, what's that kind of... Like, why are you asking him questions? Or how do you explain why you're asking him questions? Um, okay, so I guess the first thing I would 
say the reason for the call is yeah I'm, yeah I'm, I'm with so and so company okay we, we developed this i'd like to hear more about your business because i might have something you could help how does that sound okay and then he'll and then tell me about tell me about what you do okay and then you ask questions around that and okay. then once you've once you've found out you've then also got a load of useful hooks sure and you're obviously you're taking notes and whatnot to Absol follow abs up and okay okay abs absolutely and then once he's told you more about the problems you have then got oh listen bill i think i can help you because of this reason this reason uh, this reason okay okay interesting and then chances are is there usually like a follow-up call or, or kind of what happens after that call uh, obviously it depends what you're selling sure uh, and the size of the size of the contract you're trying to do but um it i would say generally it would then be maybe schedule them for a demo and then you give them okay a demo and then all of the, but you never give the demo until you know enough about them because Okay, so you wouldn't give the demo on that call. You'd follow up. You'd schedule a follow up demo. Generally, I wouldn't give the demo on the call because okay. it generally suggests that I've got all the time in the world, so I'm not I, necessarily doing very well. I see. So you basically say, "Okay, like I got to go to another meeting or, or something," yeah. even if you don't. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. So then again, you're going to suggest the time. So I, I think uh, we need okay. to get you in for a demo. How does Wednesday? 2.30 sound. Okay, and then he'll reply back, no, 1.30 or whatever Yeah, time. absolutely. Okay. And, and again, never ask him what time. Sure. Always suggest times first. I, I think that's a good ad good advice. And I think it's kind of like people used to say that when dating. It's never like ask a girl like, oh, we should get together sometime for coffee. It's like you give them a time, like how Friday at 5 or something. Yeah. I don't know, whatever, right? It's that same absolutely. kind of con concept. Because right? that sales yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. No, that's interesting. Okay, so you give them the demo, and then is it usually kind of they decide, like, yeah, I want to buy this, or is it kind of a longer process, or I need to show so-and-so, or in your experience, kind of how does that play out? So um, with Be Anywhere selling, like, RMM software or remote control sure. software, the next step from the demo would be to get a trial. Them started with a trial. Okay, and you would, would you give them a trial coming out of that demo call, or you do that again uh when i was selling the rmm i would always try and um set up a separate meeting to get them going with the trial oh so like uh almost like a intro to the software you kind of walk them through absolutely kind of, here's your trial i'll show you how to use it kind of a thing absolutely so the way i generally ran my sales was no one got to try the product unless they did it with me because i wanted to make sure they knew exactly how to use the product so they used it right and that's particularly important for startup mvps because they're not necessarily polished finished products sure they're not always particularly intuitive and that's okay okay if it's not but you need to make sure the person has everything he needs to use the product no that's that's actually really good advice and it's interesting that you said it doesn't need to be perfect and it can be an mvp and it's not polished because i think a lot of people are embarrassed to show something that's not polished to whatever level they would like it to be polished right and chances are your user doesn't really care especially if it's solving a problem and they know you're working on improving that have you found that um, absolutely so um when we when we launched um um, our RMM product, it was a brand, brand new MVP. And so it was, we didn't have a manual. Okay. Sure. <laughs> we, sure. we, we, we didn't have any kind of documentation whatsoever. Okay. And so um, I would just literally, ha I would spend an hour with the person running through the, running through the product, how to use it, but always though specifically to use it to their problem okay so interesting yeah because so it's not like a canned tr like demo or, or trial or when you're walking them through it's like here you you go here to solve this problem of yours then you go here to solve yeah. this problem of yours interesting i i think a lot of people fail at that piece right they kind of give like here's all the features and look yeah. at all the like bells and whistles but they don't care if, if two of the features solve their problem they won't use the other 10 or 50 or whatever that number is absolutely and 
in you know they might give you an hour for the you know to get them set up with their trial or the demo but realistically they're only going to take about seven minutes worth of what you show them in the rest of the time they're just going to be looking at that screen la di da di da probably on their phone checking emails and so you, you, you need to make sure that you show them the most important things because right. again it all comes down to solving their problem sure so you say seven minutes show them how to solve their problems in seven minutes so yeah. how long is your usual kind of intro trial demo then is it 15 minutes is it 30 is it um, 10 i would make sure i was always off the call within an hour okay an hour, okay. An hour is the absolute cut off even if i've got time to do longer with them they're not going to take in okay fair and then how do you okay so you give them the trial they're playing with it do you follow up with them after that absolutely and so, how soon after um so i would aim to follow up with them uh probably a couple of days so set them up with the demo okay. and then aim to do you know a light follow-up like thanks thanks so much for your time again i hope you enjoyed the demo and it was useful are you having is there anything I can help you with right now? Just to let them know that you care. Sure. And then I would then aim to, f I would always though, at the end of every meeting, book the next one. So I would send oh, the follow up okay. email anyway, but always book the next meeting. On the call. On the call. Okay, so you say I'll reach out to you in f a week or whatever that yeah. is at this, and then the, again with the how about 2.30 or whatever. Yeah, yeah okay. Ab absolutely. It's always really important to uh, book the next meeting on the next call. Sure. Um, when you're contacting people, always have one call to action, and it's always got to be a yes or no okay. call to action. So um, it's um, what. So it's always. So I I would normally sell it as a a training, another training session. I want to see how you're getting on, so I can make some. Uh, so you know, I can make some suggestions how you can get more out of it. Okay, so you could say like, do you watch their workflow? Then you say, okay, well, show me how you do this task. And then you say, well, actually, you could go here, here, and here, or something like that. Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Because for me, it, well, the most important thing is that the person was able to use the product and get the most out of the product. Sure, of course, that makes a lot of sense. So, okay, so how long does it traditionally take, in your experience, that they decide like this product's for me, or no, this isn't going to work for me? Um, I f I found because with selling the RMM, they were probably contracts between a thousand dollars to fifty thousand okay. dollars a year. Okay. recurring subscription so okay. i would say generally within three within three weeks I, okay. I i would either have money off them or no no money okay interesting so under a month that's pretty good going from like zero to, to a contract in three weeks but that's that's what i used to target but i had monthly sales target so i needed that to happen okay no but it's good <laughs> though right because in, in in a lot of cases especially with startups you probably don't have a full-time even sales guy in a lot of cases you it, you might be the sales guy and so you might have to say well you know I can only spend a few, like a total of three weeks but you know that might be what three hours five hours I don't know give or take like it's yeah. probably you know a handful of hours right in that period of time and if you're following up with a number of people that's a lot of time in three weeks right yeah absolutely the key is pick a good si Pick a good CRM so that okay. it's. Um, I would also make take advantage of just workflow aut automation tools. Like there's a lot of great tools out there that are SaaS based. They're ten bucks a month. Okay. And so try try and make sure your time is as efficient as possible, so you can um, so you can sell so you can so you've got as much time as you need for selling. Because I mean, f for me. Uh, the thing I used to love about sales as well is you could pretty much pick how much money you want to make. Okay. So why why do you say that out of curiosity? Okay. So say say you want to make fifty thousand dollars this month. Okay. You know your product and the price. So to to make fifty thousand dollars, I don't know. I need to sell to ten people. Okay. So to sell to ten people, I need to have thirty demos. 
So okay. to get 30 demos, I need to make 50 calls. And I so you, s- oh, start okay. at, you can start at the goal and work your way back. Okay. No, that's, that's actually really good advice. That's, that's interesting. And so, and then do you kind of over time as you get better at it, you kind of set those numbers higher. Now you say, I want to make 60 K yeah. or whatever. The moment you make $50,000, you then have to think, why didn't I make $75,000? Ah, okay. I got you. Okay. And you keep going. Yep. Yeah, the- Interesting. Okay. So on average, what would you say is kind of the close rate that people should aim for? Is it 5%, 3%, 1%, 10%? 10%? I Sounds would, like a third, maybe. I, I, I would say you want to make the close rate 100% of those that are closable. Okay. And, and what would you describe as a closable deal? At what point are you like, this is closable or no, I'm just wasting my time? So that's where at the start, your qualifying really needs to come in, which is does a does the person need the product and can they afford it? Oh, so before you go through that yeah, whole I'm not gonna thing, give them, you try to do that I'm, as I'm soon not as give possible. Them, I'm ah, not going to okay. give them four hours of my time if they can't sure. afford the product because... Yeah, no, it makes total <laughs> sense. No, I, I, no it's, that's good advice though because I know I've seen guys chase certain things for months and there's no money. Yeah. And the guy's just maybe just trying to be nice or hoping one day they can use the product. But it's just wasting yeah. your time. Yeah, you, that's interesting. You, you would be surprised as well, like how easy it is to find out how how someone can afford it. So do you okay. want to know how I would find yeah, out? Yeah, I would love to know. I, this I would is ask, awesome, dude. I, I, I love it. I, would, I, I, would, it. I, would, I would ask them how much money they had. Really? Straight up? Yeah, straight up. Not not in an aggressive... Okay, but like, like what would you... How would you bring up that question? Do you, you, you literally say, like, what's your budget for something like this? Yeah, I was like, well, out of interest, how much are you looking to spend? Would you do that kind of in the early calls before the demo then? Yep. Okay. So obviously it's not the first thing. Yeah. You, you, you need to build up a certain level of rapport with the person before you can ask them how much money they have. But okay. um, m- money's important. It's always on the table. And sure. so, like, I would find, first of all, find out if they need it. Okay. Once you've found out that, once we've established they need it, then just ask them how much they have to work with. So if you're selling to, um, you know, a, you know, turn to a company, they'll have budget. So you just ask them and most people will tell you. Okay. The, the secret is in the tonality. Okay. So like if I said, or say uh, you're going out tonight, I say, oh, out of interest, how much are you looking to spend tonight? It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Or if I was like, how much money have you got? Then you're going to say, Piss off. That's none, <laughs> of your, none of your business. <laughs> Sorry, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's good. That's interesting. But it, but it makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like you can ask kind of questions that you need answers for, but it's all in how you phrase that question to the person, yeah. right? Because one way is offensive. The other way is just kind of like, oh, yeah. like a general inquiry. Yeah, okay. And and the way to justify it as well is it's yours. you're not wasting their time sure. either. So y- you obviously care more about your time than theirs but you know at the end of the day they they don't want to spend hours of their own time trying a product that they can't afford sure no that makes a lot of sense interesting so i we're we're coming to the end of this show and i'm curious do you have any kind of other advice kind of from the sales business development side or you know anything else off the top of your head that you were hoping to mention um i would say if you can watch one set of videos okay um for, from a sales point of view i would say uh watch jordan belfort the straight line persuasion system okay it will tell you everything you need about sales um in terms of about your startup and building it i would say there's three books I would say read if you've read them before, read them again. Okay. <laughs> um, and they'd be uh, Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Okay. Uh, Lean Startup by Eric Rice and Guy Kawasaki, The Art of the Start. Th- those very, very good books. They'll, they'll give you a lot of um, useful information. And if you're successful with the Fast Track Challenge, definitely don't go into a pitch without uh, reading them. Sure. No, that's awesome. So... Let's close the show with promoting where people can find Fast Track VC online. 
Um, any other social media? And if you want to promote anything personally, uh, go ahead. Um, so um, go to um, fasttrack.vc. That's our website. Okay. You can register. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn is Fast Track VC. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm even going to give up my um, personal work email. Oh, um, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, which is D Little, that's D, D for Delta, and then L I double T L E at fasttrack.vc. Uh, drop me an email um, anytime, and um, I'd be happy to help. I would say. And any startup that's sort of looking for funding in our range, uh, I would say just apply any way through the program. We'll do everything we can uh, to help. Um, and so, um, and there's no cost of entering the program. It's uh, completely free of charge. And until money's transferred, you know, you can pull out at any time as well. So I would say it's, it's a great way for um, any tech company really to grow. Perfect, David. Thanks very much for doing this. This has been awesome and very informative and lots of information. So uh, thanks again for doing this, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you guys and seeing where the future goes. Thanks very much, Kevin. Perfect. All right, we'll talk soon. Thanks for listening. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.